the power, the beauty, and the elegance of vision. A true gift of nature, life, and evolution. I'm a biologist working with robots. And as a biologist, I love the study of life and the impact of this ever-changing environment on our evolution. And by embracing and adapting the positive features of technology, our world and future is only limited by our imagination. Welcome to my world of robobiology. My focus area is healthcare, which I believe is a basic right. My vision is to create a world in which robotic technology enables affordable medicine for all. To get there, I'm going to explain three things. Where are we at with robots? How I use a robotic vision technology in healthcare? And how it's all going to work together? To start, let's think about robots and let's go back in time. About 542 million years ago, there was a burst in evolution where we saw the biggest diversity of life happened at a relatively short period called the Cambrian Explosion. So simple organisms evolved into more complex beings because of change in environment. No one really understands the reasons behind this change, but it was believed to be because of change in oxygen, change in temperature, and most importantly, the evolution of vision. So organisms were able to see for the first time, and this led to a whole new creative way of life, from looking for food to predatory behaviors and the different sexual patterns. We're seeing the same thing in robotics now. There's a perfect alignment in changing technology with great computing power, big data, and AI revolution. And AI is different to robots, yeah? So AI is the brain, better than ours at pattern recognition and connecting the dots that's required for precision decision making. But having said that, AI is also not as sophisticated as our brains in terms of perception, but we are getting there. And this physical thing that understands this decision to act is the robot. We humans do this beautifully because we sense the world, we touch, we hear, we feel, and see. And even if we cannot see, we learn to live and adapt and move forward. Robots are not there yet. They are dumb. Can't, can't call them dumb. Let's call them, they're like little children influenced by the evolving technology and what we teach them. And they're just learning. They're learning how to sense in many ways. And we believe that vision in robotics could be one of the most efficient and effective ways of unlocking their potential to interact in our world. We at the Center of Robotic Vision create robots that see better so it can sense better and eventually interact with complex, unstructured real-world environments. So what is the difference between the way humans and robots see? There are nine ways humans perceive the world through vision. And how the brain and the vision works is really complex, but it's beautifully coordinated that allows us to see and interact the way we do. We cannot train our robots to see and understand like the way we do, but we have moved way ahead from robots seeing nothing to robots with a single camera and more complex ways of sensing our environment. One of the ways that robots can see is using a computational imaging technology called this light field. Light field is all luminescence. It is the collection of light rays in every direction and at every point in space. Light field imaging is recording the light field. So how does it work? Each of you here are looking at me 
like individual cameras. Together and collectively, you're acting like a light field camera. Each of you are also looking at me at a slightly different perspective. So your focus on me is from that perspective. So some of you here can see me very clearly and some can't. Maybe, I don't know, because of a tall person in front of you or big hair. But together and collectively, you can see every inch of me. And if I'm recording all these views and depending on where I want to focus, I will choose my views. I will choose views from here to get the information of my palm and even those lines. I will choose views from here to get the information of the back of my hand. Or I will choose all these views to get a 3D view of my hand. Roboticists around the world are using this technology to understand our surroundings a lot more. This allows robots to work out distances, how to look beyond obstacles, and even understand textures. This ability is allowing robots to evolve and see better. For example, in the military, they're using this technology to navigate and search for missiles. In the virtual and augmented world, we are creating enhanced experience for movies and gaming. Light field is radically changing the lens through which we see the world. I'm interested in healthcare. So we've used light field technology to build a device that can image the retina. And it's going to look something like this. We've named it the retinal planoptoscope. But before I go on and explain how it works, let's understand some of the challenges behind retinal imaging. The retina is the back of the eye. The eye is also a living camera. So it's really hard to take an image of an imaging system. It's like, I'm sure some of you here are guilty of this, but really it is like trying to stand in front of a mirror and take a picture of yourself with a flashlight on, like that one there. I love that picture. To see the retina, you also have to see through the pupil. It's like trying to see the world through a keyhole. And that's why specialists sometimes use this drop to dilate the pupil to make it bigger. So the entire process of taking an image of your retina could be about four hours. So why the retina? It allows us to see, it is our evolutionary advantage, and it is the most efficient and effective way of interacting with the world around us. So what is the problem? 80% of eye disease leading to blindness can be prevented if it is monitored regularly and treated in time. There are 285 million people suffering from preventable eye disease. Modern retinal equipments can provide good quality diagnostic images, but these numbers say something is wrong. There are some really great efforts out there trying to reduce this number, but one of the main challenges that remain is still how to take a good quality diagnostic image. Last month, FDA approved a set of AI algorithms that can detect a retinal disorder. This is great news. This means that automated precision diagnosis is already possible, but how am I going to take this image? Current precision equipment look something like this. They are large, they are bulky, they are expensive. And even if you can afford it, you try and drive it back to, to, on the outback, on these rocky roads, you may need a technical specialist or an expert to recalibrate it or fix it. You also need a trained specialist to take an image of your retina. This device here attempts to solve these problems. 
We capture 2,600 views using a single shot. The optics of this device is really complex, but the, the device itself is quite simple, really. So it makes it realistically portable. Because we focus after taking an image, anyone can take a precise image. We also offer good quality diagnostic images. Because remember, in light field, you're not missing any information. And you're choosing your views depending on where you want to focus. The idea really was to offer new diagnostic features way beyond any current retinal equipment that you can find. For the first time, 3D depth maps and metric measurements of your retinal features that is patient-specific. So you can track and monitor changes that are specific to you. And all this without dilating the eye. So what does this really mean? A device such as this, combined with an intelligent brain like the one the FDA has approved, could truly mean non-invasive, preventative, personalized eye care anywhere. Research also shows that our retinas holds the potential to predict cardiovascular risk and understand the health of our brains by understanding diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. The impact of this will be far-reaching for our health. And maybe one day we will be able to use all this information with a robot to act, to act and perform autonomous intervention. This means robots will evolve. They will see the world, and they will think, and they will be able to act. This leads me to my final concern. How is this all going to work together? We're at an exciting time of evolution in the world of technology that could lead to exponential improvement in capabilities. But this is not enough. There's a lot of science and technology out there, but bringing this to the people who really need it the most is the biggest challenge in healthcare. And we can do this. We can do this by understanding people, their motivations, their behaviors, and their needs. We must always put humans first to gain insights on how to design our technologies and services so it reaches people. And let's not forget, inform policies to ensure society's needs. We live in an age of disruption. Things are a lot easier, but at the same time, more and more complex. Technology has disrupted a number of fields from hospitality, financial services, shopping. Healthcare is that last great frontier to innovate the way medicine is practiced and delivered. This will not just have an impact on developed health systems, but around the world. Robots are evolving similar to the way we are, we did. We are the most successful species and we are the creators of this robotic world. So it is our duty to ensure that they serve the greater good. For me, this means transforming healthcare so every individual can augment their lives and benefit from this new form of robotic life. And I see, I see a future where humans and robots are all working together to benefit us. This is my world of robobiology. Thank you.